Hello everyone. I'm going to make a small tutorial video about uh, the usage of uh, QGIS in regards to OpenStreetMap. So this is OpenStreetMap. Here it shows the Jeep lines. Uh, this is the uh, standard map, which probably all of you already have seen. And we are mapping this um, with the help of uh, the city, for the city, for all the barangays to use. And the easiest thing to access data is QGIS. With QGIS you can access really all of the information, even the information you do not see on the map. So this is what you see when, when you open QGIS. Here on the left side there's OpenStreetMap under XYZ tiles. You click on it and then you zoom here to Baguio. You see as you zoom in more, you actually get more information. And I made a preset here for a plugin which is called Quick OSM and you click that preset and then you simply run it and it will download the information which I told it to download. Um, how to make a preset? It's a bit more complicated. If there's any interest for that I will explain that in another video. Um, but right now this is about how simple we can make it for the barangay. So if you say, I want data for streets in the barangay with their names, this is a preset that shows you that. So I made this preset basically with three concepts, three basic concepts, the infrastructure, the important infrastructure, the uh, important boundaries, which means the poor boundary, barangay boundary and city boundary. I use the information of the, uh, the official information of the assessor office, so you will notice it's uh, identical. Uh, and then the other thing is the uh, buildings. So which buildings have house numbers, lot numbers, or reference numbers? Reference numbers means there is a number, but we do not know if that is a house number or a lot number, but it refers to that building. Uh, so it's a reference number. The moment we know it's a house number or a lot number, we can change that uh, correspondingly. And then the last concept is the um, government uh, buildings, uh, like barangay halls and town and, uh, and outposts. Uh, right now this is going to take a bit. You see here, this, this went pretty fast. Right now it's downloading every single building in the city, which is mapped, sometimes wrongfully, sometimes rightfully, mostly rightfully, but sometimes wrongfully, I have to say. Uh, either way, they don't have any address information at all. Uh, which means that's most of the uh, buildings. Um, I think right now there are about 130,000 buildings or so in Baguio, or at least residential buildings. If you do here a count, uh, show feature count, then you see it's about 70,000, which means half of the buildings in Baguio have not been mapped yet. This, this is only half of it. And uh, we can disable the background, so now it's gone, now there's no background. You can enable the background and back, then you see the standard map again. But let's disable it, we want to focus on the data, right? Uh, so 70,000 buildings are unmapped. And uh, you can basically disable all these layers here. You can group these layers. You can work with this offline. Um, for example, if I right click on it, I could say make permanent. Uh, here I can store it under a geo package format and all the relevant information. I'm not going into the details right now. This is really about how easy it can get for barangay captains or barangay officials or for pork leaders to visualize data which we put on OpenStreetMap. So these are all the buildings in Baguio which we map and do not have an address. Then we close this. Here we visualize the barangay holes. Actually we mapped already a lot more, but there is some data inconsistency, which I will work on uh, in the near future. Um, for the sake of argument, let's open the background. So here's the barangay hall of Pencil Proper, here's the barangay hall of Irisan, Dominican Mirador barangay hall. In fact, when you zoom in, you actually see here Lourdes Barangay Hall. So that actually, I think all the Barangay Halls are on the map. 
Um, it's just they are not properly mapped. A lot of that was mapped in the past. There are some inconsistencies. We're working on that now. Anyway, here you can enable the uh, outpost. Um, these are mostly mapped only in this area because this is the area where I walk around most of the time. Um, then here you see the buildings which have a reference. So a reference and the lot number and the house number. So these have everything here, these few buildings. You can also do a count here. Then you see how many buildings have and the lot number and the house number. But well, sexy and the whole of Baguio. At least on the map. Uh, then you have buildings with a lot, only lot number. And that's only one. That's, I forgot already where it is, it's somewhere here. Then you can visualize the buildings which have house numbers. Um, actually, all of this I did manually myself, so it was a lot of work for me. Skull Barrier I did completely, and my area, St. Carlos Heights, I did most of that. Uh, the rest is as I walk around. Um, I know, this I did with students, actually the students did that, of the Pine City High School, I forgot about that. Uh, Pine City National High School, senior. Uh, here I walked around, here I walk around, here I walk around, so I should see randomly, I then see numbers and sometimes I add them when I see them. Uh, these are buildings which then have a reference, which means I do not actually know if that's a house number or a lot number. Then they get a reference number. Either way, all of this information, all of these together, are used by companies like Grab, courier companies, to actually find locations. So if, if you type in Grab Food any address, which is mapped, it will find that address. And Wait a second, I'm moving in this here. So here I just ordered some food, soup actually. And as you can see, this is the Grab website. You can see that here. Here you see the data of Grab. And here in the lower right, you actually see this is an open street map. You, you also recognize this map actually. It does not look like Google, it's really open street map. And uh, it's, it's just a different rendering what Grab uses, so they only render the, inf the basic information which is important for them to keep the map slim. But this is all open street map. Um, so companies like Grab use it, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, they all use that. But let's get back here. Here you see now the addresses which are already mapped. Then you can say, I want to see all the barangay boundaries with the labels, and you see the names of the barangays. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you can also add the poor boundaries. Uh, there are then these light blue boundaries. So if we disable the, the barangay boundaries, so you see the poor boundaries I mapped throughout the city. So some here, some here, some here. Now I'm working here, I got from several barn guys now information here, but it's a lot of work for me alone, but uh, I'll get at it. You can also add the labels, so you see actually the names of the Purox. Um, yeah, for example here, um, this is interesting, you can change the data, because there's a lot more data than what you actually see. You can say for example, I do not want the name, I want the alternative name. Okay, let's see. Ta -da. And suddenly you don't have pork one, two, three, four. You actually see this is Tip Top, Maria Baza, this is Interior of Igido, Litang, Amsing. So suddenly you see different information. So you, while you as barangay or poor cap leader work with the data, but just click right, properties, and here on the label, value here. Here you see the selection, what you can choose from, and that is only for this specific tag, for the label. If you select some other tag, you get different choices, what data there is available. There's also available the 
data from the PSA about the uh, consensus. So all that data is on the map. You can access that. But uh, very interesting, you can say, for example, okay, I as barangay or pork leader, I want to know the steps and the steps with the handrails. So here you can actually see where are steps and steps with handrails. You can again disable the background layer. These then you see here the red is the steps. Golden would be steps with handrails. So these all have do not have handrails. Um, when you go here to Irizan, where I live, you actually notice here here's a difference. So here you see which steps here have handrails and which don't have handrails. The golden ones have the handrails, the red ones don't have handrails. So red is danger, golden is good. And the same with footways. So in Irizan, as you can see, it's all red. So there's no tactile paving. But if you go here, Carina Highway, at some point here, this is actually the boundary of Irizan, it starts with tactile paving and it goes all the way to the city so you can safely walk to the city I've been updating this I'm there's a lot still not updated again I'm just a one-man army but um, yeah this is information also you at the barangay level everyone can update this information um, here you can select the streets and I made them extra thick, so if you do not like this setting, you can just here go to the visualization and say, I do not like what uh, Vincent did, so thick. I just want the four thick. See? I'm getting thinner. I made it so thick, so it's more easy for me to recognize this differences but you can zoom in here and you see all the names of all the streets you see which streets do not have a name actually you can filter that out with the queries you can say show me only the streets which do not have a name yet so we can give these streets a proper name um, all of that you can easily do here with these layers this preset i made and um, at this point I'm going to finish this video because this video is just about showing what you can do with uh, QGIS and OpenStreetMap. This is a very simple thing actually, what I'm going to show now. You can just enable and disable layers to visualize whatever you want to see. If there is interest in it, I can make a video how to make queries, how to get data. Like I said, you can also visualize um, fire hydrants, you can visualize even trees, you can visualize parks, you can visualize leisure places, you can visualize museums, drainage, waterways, schools, health centers. You just add a different layer here and that's it. Um, so at this point I'm going to skip this video. Uh, again, way too long. I just wanted to make it for like five minutes to quickly show all the layers of what you can do with it. But there's so much you can do with it. It's it's very hard to keep the video short. But at this point, I'm going to stop and then I say goodbye. If there's any questions you have, just reach out to me, ask me. I will answer you. I will help you. I can give tutorials. I, if I'm around and have the time, I can even come by and show you on the computer. At uh, this pay point I say goodbye and uh, yeah, I hope you all understand the benefits of QGIS and how easy it can be.